The isopod is a portable vinyl enclosure that creates a negative airspace to transport patients with biologically infectious diseases. The isopod has been made by different manufacturers over the years. You may find some that are made by a company called TBI and others by a company called Immediate Response Technologies. This video will cover the assembly of the isopod from the Immediate Response Technologies company. The components of the isopod fit inside of the stuffel bag and can be easily rolled out onto a hospital cart or a gurney. The isopod has belts on the bottom to connect to the cart or gurney that you've laid it on. Be careful when you strap those underneath that you don't catch on any of the moving parts of your cart. There may be situations with an ambulance gurney where it would be better to use the belts connected to the gurney to hold the isopod on safely and stably. Once you open the isopod, you're going to notice that there are several straps inside. Another thing you'll see is this yellow head pad. That indicates where the head of the patient should go. So make sure that the head of the isopod lines up with the head of your cart. The straps are at the head, wrist, waist, and legs. These straps are restraints and we would need a doctor's order to use them. The straps are held on by fused connectors and you could connect a more typical restraint to those connectors if you wanted to. The blower motor for this isopod is very similar to one that we would use for a powered air purifying respirator. There are three air inlets, two of which we're actually going to cap. The third one is where we're going to connect to the isopod using this hose and screw connector. The air outlet at the bottom is where the air will pass out, having been filtered back into the environment. At the bottom you'll also see this power switch and on top you'll notice a silver port to connect the battery charger. The blower motor comes with a charger. The charger will be red when it's charging and turn green when it's fully charged. People often ask, how long will the blower motor run? The best way to test this is to set up your isopod with all of its filters completely zipped up and run your blower motor with a full charge. Record the time that it lasts. This will tell you exactly how long your blower motor will run and how long you can trust it in a real situation. There are three filters that need to be attached to the isopod. Two of the filters are HEPA filters. We're going to use these particulate filters on the external side of the isopod at the head end. The third filter in the isopod goes on the foot end inside the isopod. This is the most important filter because it's the last filter before air leaves the isopod. The filter is special because it's not only a, a HEPA filter, but it also filters out organic vapors and acid gas.
Once the motor is connected and the filters are attached to your isopod, we can construct the structure. The isopod has plastic ribs, and each rib has a slot and a tab that slide easily together. At the top of each rib, there is a connection for a spine. So we will insert a spine in each one of the ribs. These ribs and spines create the structure for the isopod. Now we can turn on the blower motor and zip up the isopod. The blower motor will beep when you first turn it on. And then you'll feel air coming out the bottom of the blower unit. The isopod has multiple access points. You will find a snorkel port on either end of the isopod. The snorkel port is a way to fish in lines for oxygen, monitoring, or intravenous lines. The port is an opening into the isopod, so we need to keep the Velcro strap nice and tight to maintain the negative pressure. There is another access port that's only available on the head end of the isopod, and this is a small pass-through that's covered by this yellow cap. We can remove this cap. Insert our small items. And put the cap back on. Once the items are inside, the care team can retrieve the items from the sleeve. Your isopod may have another access port. In this case, the access port is clear and includes zippers. We can insert our item into this clear compartment through the zipper and shut it, and then the care team can access it through a secondary zipper inside and bring it into the isopod. You'll find glove ports throughout your isopod. We should still use our normal patient care gloves inside the glove ports of the isopod. We can reach in and care for our patient inside the isopod using the clear areas to see what we're doing. If for some reason we're inside that isopod and we breach that glove, we can gently remove our glove trying to keep the contaminated surfaces inside. Gently twist the glove port and then secure it with tape to prevent any contagion from leaving the isopod as well as maintaining the negative pressure seal. The isopod is a helpful tool to transfer a patient with a highly infectious disease. This is a tool that we don't use often, so it's important to practice with your isopod to maintain competence. We hope this video will help you to assemble your isopod for maintenance and clinical use.